RM Williams' most famous boot is the Craftsman or Comfort Craftsman Chelsea boot with the uh, pointy but wedge shaped toe. But they also make this round toe boot called the Turnout. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy. Uh, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I work on, the Wajit people. This is RM Williams' turnout boot. Turnout. Of course, RM is famous for Chelsea boots, their most well known being the leather soled craftsman or the rubber soled comfort craftsman, which has a sleeker toe profile that ends with a chisel shaped toe. Uh, you can see my review of one of them up there. I'll uh, also leave you affiliate links to their website in the uh, description area below. And you can see on their website that they actually make several different Chelsea boots, including the Macquarie, the Tambo, the Gardner, uh, and the Goodwood. They also make this turnout boot, which is built on a slightly wider last uh, and a rounded toe. Like all Chelsea boots, they have no laces but are held on uh, by the shape of the boot and these elastic goring panels at their sides. The turnout is uh, five and a half inches high at the shaft from the top of the heel to the, to the collar. This comfort turnout is on a rubber outsole with a low block heel. As with all RM Williams's Chelsea boots, they have the uh, double cloth pull tabs at the top embroidered with RM's logo, uh, made in Australia, uh, and the uh, original factory address, which is now a museum. If you don't already know, the laceless Chelsea boot was invented by Queen Victoria's bootmaker when she wanted an easy on, easy off boot for walking and riding instead of the heavily laced and hooked riding boots of her day. They became uh, famous, especially when worn by pop groups in the London of the swinging 60s. There are two stories as to why they became known as Chelsea boots. In the past, the, uh, there have been advertisements for elastic-sided boots uh, rather than Chelsea boots. Chelsea is a salubrious suburb in southwest London, and one story goes that when Queen Victoria wore her J. Hall Sparks patented elastic side boots, <laughs> the people living in Chelsea, who were rich, uh, often titled or fashionable writers and artists, uh, called the Chelsea set, they copied her and so they became Chelsea set boots. The other story is that the Beatles had their boots made by a theatrical costumer who added winkle picker toes and Cuban heels, and uh, they were then picked up by other pop groups who frequented World's End, the western end of the King's Road in Chelsea, and they became known then as Chelsea boots. I am old enough to know people who were in their 20s in the 1960s, and they do remember calling their Beetle boots Chelsea boots for the first time. I'm not old enough to know anyone alive from the 1890s, so I can't confirm that people called them Chelsea set boots in those days. Now this particular pair by RM Williams is in full grain yearling leather, which is leather from a one-year-old calf, presumably culled for the meat industry as veal. Uh, it's from either an Australian or a New Zealand tannery. The reddish tan color is called Warwick by RM. I'm not quite sure why. My research doesn't show any color called Warwick in leather, fabric, or even nature. <laughs> uh, the way RM Williams uses a lot of South Australian names in their products, it is possible this is a proprietary color named after a, uh, a quite prominent South Australian family called Warwick, who founded Hollywilliana Sheep Station that at its height was as big as 178 square miles. <laughs> that is a lot of sheep. At the moment, they don't make the turnout in Warwick Yearling. Now, I will leave a link in, uh, to their turnout boots below in the description. They currently make them in Black or Chestnut Yearling. Every now and then, though, they do some seasonal drops, so they may bring this color back at some time. And, uh, you know, I hope so, because it's a brilliant color. I won't say too much in this video about the brand RM Williams, except that it was founded in the 1930s by Reginald Murray Williams, hence RM. Uh, and after worldwide expansion and uh, several changes of ownership, is now owned by Australian iron ore billionaire Andrew Twiggy Forrest. Go and watch this review of your garden, a boot where I spend a, a bit more time going through the brand's history. 
In fact, now I'll go straight into construction and materials. As I said, this is made from yearling leather, which is taken from a one-year-old calf destined for the meat industry. It has an incredibly soft and supple hand, uh, very smooth, and as the skin of a young animal is very strong for its one and a half millimeter thickness. It shares the same characteristics as kangaroo leather in that having a high tensile strength due to its packed young fibers. It is a fully uh, leather lined boot with a very soft kid lining or leather from a young goat. Together with the yearling leather, the lining in yearling is only two and a half mils thick, a little less than that in fact, very supple. And I can't begin to describe to you how incredibly soft as a baby's bottom this feels under my hand. The stitching is immaculate, showing very clean, consistent and even double stitching that holds the goring in place and around the collar. Uh, and of course, like all uh, RM Chelsea's, this is a whole cut, meaning that the, it's made from one piece of leather. For other Chelsea brands, they make them from two or three pieces of leather and you'll often see a seam under each goring panel as well as a seam up the back. Or you'll see a vamp piece that's attached to the shaft piece with, it, with the seam here. In this case, one piece of leather is cut, then hand lasted and sewn together with one seam up the back. Just think how difficult that is to take a flat piece of leather and mold it into a three-dimensional foot shape by hand without showing any fold lines or creases where you bend it. Even the stitching up the back is sturdy and neat, despite the fact that it is the only structural seam that stops the boot from falling apart. The goring panels are finely woven themselves over two mils thick, uh, when many lesser brands use wide weave, one mil thick elastic goring. Inside the boot, as this is a comfort turnout, they use the same construction material as their comfort craftsman. On the inside, looking downwards, and I'm pretty sure in this light you can't see it, they do have a thick foam insole that's about 10 mils thick with an uh, extra padded leather liner uh, at the heel for even more shock absorption. Uh, under that is the veg tan insole to which they attach the turned in uppers and the Goodyear welt. Yes, this is Goodyear welted and it's a 270 degree welt. Uh, and let's break that down. They take a thin strip of leather called the welt. It's long enough to go around the front three quarters of the boot hence 270 degrees. The welt is stitched on the inside uh, into the leather insole and the turned in uppers to attach the uppers to the sole construction. Then the outside edge of the welt is stitched through uh, to the rubber outsole. There isn't actually a midsole in this per se because inside the leather insole, cork and the comfort insole uh, make up the inner sole construction, which means less weight and more flexibility. At the back, since the welt doesn't do the connecting there between the uh, uh, sole and the uppers, the sole and the heels are glued and then nailed into the leather insole with clinch nails. That's why the heel comfort pad does double duty and protects your heel uh, from feeling the clinch nails. The reason for the Goodyear welt construction is to attain a level of good water resistance, since the two stitches means that there are no stitch holes going all the way through from outside the boot to inside. And it also means that it is recraftable when you need a resole, uh, either by sending it back to the RM Williams factory or by any good cobbler with a Goodyear welt uh, stitching machine. The reason it's 270 and not 360 is because of weight, it's lighter, uh, flexibility, and to create a sleeker outline at the heel without a protruding welt shaft. The outsole is a proprietary RM Williams Longhorn brand rubber outsole. It has a flat low profile, so allows for this to be worn in more dressy occasions, but it's also very grippy in sand and mud as well as on uh, slippery urban surfaces. On RM's boot care page, they advise that this yearling leather falls under their pigmented finished leathers and cleaning involves the use of RM Williams' cleaning and care products. Fair enough, but all you need to know is to first wipe the boots with a damp cloth to remove any surface mud, dirt, dust or salt, then apply a leather cleaner, especially into the more significant marks, and then remove any excess cleaner with a damp cloth. Now, to be fair, I found that RM's uh, kind of spray-on cleaner is probably best for this stage of care. 
You can use a regular saddle soap, but I would test it on a corner of the collar first maybe to see how it reacts. Some soaps are a little more waxy. Uh, then to condition, you should be able to use any good quality neutral leather conditioner like a Saphir product or I use Venetian shoe cream. You can then polish with a light coat of wax polish uh, matching the color of the leather and your chances of doing so are probably reverting to RM Williams' waxes. Sizing RM Williams is staying true to size but in the UK or Australian sizing format. The Aussie or UK size numbers are one number down from the US, just like Viberg. So a US 9 is a UK 8, and the same as a Canadian 8. Widths are narrow, regular, and wide. Uh, the size letters for regular is a G instead of the American D. Generally, you take your Brannock size and you do not take a half size down. Now, I'm a bit weird in RMs. I'm a UK 7.5 in average width measured on the Brannock. In US terms, that's an 8.5D. So to stay true to size, I really should take this 7.5G boots. Unfortunately, the last are, are quite slim at the ball of my feet, which, to be fair, I'm on the verge of going from D to E in American. So my best fit is in the 8G. Now your experience might be different, and if your feet are more regular in the proportions, I'd stay true to size. Because the other thing is that in a Chelsea, your fit should be snug in the heel, snug over the instep, and snug at the ball. It is the shape of the boot that helps to keep the boot on your feet since there are no laces. In Chelsea's, there are, uh, should be some heel slip at the beginning, and while this will diminish as the boot breaks in, it will never really go away. The length of your foot is not the important part. It's actually much more important to ensure that the length from the heel to the ball is correct to where you and the boot are built to flex together. A little extra length at the toes, which is my case in, in this, uh, is not a problem. As for comfort, ah well, it's in the name. <laughs> the shock absorption is phenomenal and with the more rounded toe, I have a lot of comfort in that my toes are not squished together. Break-in was easy. Everything about the boot, the comfort of the leather, the suppleness, the support of the last, the, the comfort insole and rubber outsole provides well-supported all-day wear. The comfort turnout today is 649 Australian dollars. In the high street Australian market, that's a luxury goods price. You can get many brands, mostly not made in Australia if you care, that sell for around $200, and that is a high price for the average punter. However, most are simply not made well enough or are cemented sole boots or are factory made and uh, machine lasted and uh, computer controlled. There is no RM comparison in Australia, but surely you'd compare uh, these with Spanish dress Chelsea's like Camina that are available online for over 700 Aussie bucks. Ellen Edmonds have dressy Chelsea boots that are not one piece whole cut and they sell for around the 600 Aussie dollar mark unless they're on sale. Uh, let's go to England. Joseph Cheney's Chelsea boots sell for over 800 Aussie when you translate the dollars. Crockett and Jones Chelsea's, they start at $900. So in some of my reviews, I accuse Aaron Williams of being at the top of the price range and maybe really pushing it. Well, they are, but their product is in the top range and you can't say that common sense compares these to Blundstones. I was wrong in those earlier reviews. While I can't always afford them, like I can't afford a Giorgio Armani suit no matter how much I like them, when you take a, a cool hard look at the actual competition, they do compare well. My new opinion, I was wrong. They are good value for money for this luxury product. So in summary, I do like everything about these comfort turnout boots, from the leather, to the colour, to the fit. It's going to be very interesting to see how these patina, if I wear them enough, <laughs> and how they come back from a conditioning and polish, and maybe I'll bring you a video about that. Stay tuned. In the meantime, if you like this video, don't forget to click on the like button, and of course, if you're not subscribed, please do, and click on the bell button so that you're told when uh, new videos upload. Until the next time, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so that should be it. Thank you, Gracie, and good night.